Hello everyone. Hi, welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Uh, watch the video till the end. And also, if you are new to this channel, then you can subscribe us by clicking the bell icon. Friends, today we are going to learn a tutorial on cash flow versus free cash flow. And what are the top top nine differences you must actually know? See, the difference between the cash flow and the free cash flow is a complete havoc. See, one one is used to find out how much cash comes in or how much cash comes to the business and how much cash goes out at the end of the period. And another is used to find out the valuation of the company like like DCF method. So cash flow is much broader in concept and free cash flow is computed by using earning before interest and taxes. So as an investor, you should know both of them. Cash flow will be help uh, will help you to see a real picture in the organization and the free cash flow of uh, uh, will help you to find out the value of the stock you can say and by using the dcf method so let's see the infographics of uh, cash flow versus free cash flow so here is the infographics let's learn the definition the cash flow finds out the net cash inflow of the operating investing and financing activities of the business that is like the cash flow statement sort of and the free cash flow is used to find out the present value of the business that is done with the help of discounted cash flow method and that is used for valuation now over here the objective the main objective is to find out the actual net cash inflow in the business so uh, operating financing and investing activities whatever they're negative positive and finally the balance will be your net cash inflow of the business or outflow of the business the main objective is to find the valuation which is very important value of the valuation of the business for investor and the famous method is a universal method i could say dcf the scope. The scope of the cash flow is much more broader. Over here, it is limited to the valuation. The equation. Cash flow is cash flow from operating activities plus investing activities plus financing activities. So operating is the operations of the business. Investment means any sort of acquisition of uh, assets. Financing means of equity shares, debentures, bonds. Over here, the free cash flow is your earning before interest and tax, which is known as your operating profit, which is known as operating profit into one minus tax rate. So when you do EBIT into one minus tax rate, you get no part, which is net operating profit after tax. You add back depreciation. That means any non-cash expenditure, deduct any capital expenditure, less any increase or decrease in the net working capital that will give you your free cash flow. The next is complexity. See preparation of the cash flow gets a complex when multiple cash and non cash transaction takes place during the year. But preparation of the free cash flow becomes complex when we need to calculate everything before applying the formula. See the time consumption cash flow takes a reasonable time over here. If all the information is available, FCF does not take a lot of time to calculate. But if any information is missing or you have to assume or there is a way you that there, there is an art that you need to put in over there to acquire the information. It will it will be a time consuming process. The key concepts operating cash flow, investing cash flow and financing cash flow as we all see that that is the formula basically. Then you can say in case of key concepts of FCFF, EBIT, capital expenditure and increase and decrease in the working capital which we just saw in the formula. Let's go to the next one where it is used. The cash flow is one of the four most important financial statement in financial accounting. Yes, absolutely. There are the five things which is important of that cash flow is one of the four most important. Actually, it is written over four year, but it should be five two because nowadays uh, there are some changes in schedule three. The free cash flow is used to compute the valuation under DCF method sources to create cash flow analysis. Income statement is required must be the profit and loss statement to compute the free cash flow. Income statement is required as well. Okay. That is it. We this are some of the sources of where uh, uh, this are some of the differences that we were supposed to learn. Now, what is first thing? What is cash flow? See, cash flow statement is is one of the most important statement investor should go through before he ever buys the stock of the company. So, in income statement, there is an opportunity to flatten the profit for the year, but in cash. But in the cash flow, it is very pretty tough to manipulate the numbers. And that's why an investor's due diligence is basically, you can say, isn't complete unless you look at the cash flow statement first. So there are two ways through which you can calculate the net cash flow. The net cash flow can be calculated with the help of two ways. The first is called as the direct method. And the second one is called over here as indirect method. The only difference between the direct 
and the indirect method is that is the calculation of the operating activity. So first we'll look into the cash flow from the operating activities, then we will look at the cash flow from the financing activity and then investing. So first is operating activities. See if we calculate the cash flow from the operating activities from indirect methods, this is the most preferred method for the organization to calculate the cash flows from the operations. So in indirect method, the cash flow analysis, following things should be kept in mind. First you need to look at the income statement okay and uh, you need to pick up the net income from the uh, and to begin with the competition that is you have to start with the net income then you need to add back all the non-cash expenses and like depreciation amortization as these are not the cash expenses they could they should be added back next we will look into the sale of the assets so basically sale of the assets if there there are any loss on the sale of the assets the amount of the loss should be added back if there is any gain on the sale of the assets the amount of the gain should be deducted next if there is any non current assets do some adjustments so non current asset you do some adjustments in the same at last we'll make necessary changes in the current assets also and in the current liability also right so let's see an example on this let's say there is company xyz which has a cash flow from operating activities in indirect method we are using. The net income is 1 lakh. The depreciation 7,600 as your taxes. Accounts receivable 2,300. Increase in the inventories 8,700. In, the, in, in negative, increase in the accounts payable 800. Accrued interest 1,600. And loss on sale of property 1,000. Which gives you the net cash flow from the operating activity 99,400. So over here, the adjustments have been made. This has all been added back then in increase is been deducted the increase in accounts payable added and increase in interest payable again added loss on sale of property has been added back so that gives you gives you your operating activity i hope you got to learn how things have been done now cash flow from the investing activity see other than the operations organization also invest in other assets and that's why we need to calculate the cash flow from investing activity as well so we need to first add back all the losses that have been incurred on the selling of the long-term assets and the next we need to deduct any gains we may have been made on the selling of the long-term loans let's see an example how things have been done over there as you can see there is a free cash flow from operate, operating activities that is one lakh then there is a purchase of the plant of 64,000 that's why it has been deducted because it is an outflow then there is a cash from the sale of land which is 24,000 right which is again an inflow so this is your balance in the operating activities you deduct the amount of in the plant and any sale will be added which gives you your net cash flow from the investing activity as 60,000 now in cash flow for financing activity we'll consider the following things like you know the buyback of the stocks and borrowing and repaying uh, repaying the loans or short term and long term loans should be included in the cash flow from the financing activity we'll also take dividend paid into account which is very important let's see an example on how things work out in the, in that area see the cash flow from the investing activity is 60000 that was the balance that we saw over there then let's say if if the cash dividend that has been paid so the cash dividend should be taken into account so that has been deducted 4400 any issue of the preference share because it is a cash inflow it has to be added any sale of the bond again that is an inflow that will be added so that gives you your net cash flow from the financing activities right so now what is exactly free cash flow see this is the at most importance because then only we would under uh, under how free cash flow is relevant in calculating the valuation of the business it's like the free cash flow that is fcf is equal to you can say the EBIT that is earning before interest and tax okay then you multiply this into one minus tax and uh, then after you need to add back any depreciation expenses plus you need to add back you any uh, changes in the working capital and uh, finally deduct any capital expenditures if any so note here that the not over here the working capital would be calculated by going into the cash flow from the operating activities and doing the adjustments regarding the current assets and current liabilities now we'll look at some of it an example of how to illustrate the free cash flow let's see let's say there is company xyz and it has the following information like ebit which is two lakh forty thousand dollars tax rate 33.33 depreciation is 2400 capital expenditure 11,000 increase in working capital 6,500 so just you apply the formula it is written 2,40,000 into 1 minus the tax rate plus you have added depreciation you have deducted your capital expenditure and you have deducted your increasing working capital that gives you your final 
FCFF as 1,44,900. Now, now let's understand how the free cash flow is relevant in computation of the valuation under DCF method. See, in free cash flow is calculated so that under DCF method, we can use free cash flow FCF. Here the formula is share price is equal to present value of the FCF plus cash less debt divided by the shares outstanding. That gives you your total share price P0. And here FCF stands for free cash flow. PV is your present value. Basically, you are bringing back the cash flows from the future in, in the present by discounting it. Now we'll take an example on uh, to illustrate the DCF method. Let's see. Company ABC has the following information furnished to us. A free cash flow 150, cash 15,000, debt 75,000, and number of shares outstanding as 40. VAC is 12%, which is discounting rate, and growth is 4%. So over here, we need to compute the share price okay using the above information so let's look at the formula under dcf the dcf method we have learned pv of fcf plus cash less debt upon total number of shares outstanding that gives you the share price so we'll put this into the figure this is basically pv of we'll, we'll put this in the figure from the example and uh, we need to understand what is pv of fcff so present value of the fcff is you have discounting at till the perpetuity that is a free cash flow divided by vac minus growth so basically it is a gordon's growth model you can say the g it's, it's called gordon's growth model okay for more details for above formula you can go for the terminal value calculation where the growth rate isn't available we would only use the weighted average cost of capital that is vac over here and nothing else let's put some figures and understand how the figures have been worked out that is uh share price and other details so the share price over here is the amount of uh free cash flow is 1,50,000 so we have inputted that 1,50 upon VAC minus growth plus we have added 15,000 as cash less debt upon the total number of shares outstanding so that gives you your total share price as 45.38 now what is the relevance of the free cash flow to the investor see other than using the dcf method fcf is also a great measure for finance financial performance of the company the free cash flow is the cash of, of a company and is able to generate after maintaining or expanding the asset base of the company. If one company has has more free cash flow, then that means it has more liquidity even after maintaining or spending cash or on its asset. But it it can also mean that the cash is underutilized and cash can be invested in the acquisition of the new investor, in the new assets. That's why it is very important to look at the holistic picture of before trying to interpret the free cash flow for any of for any company. Let's see the key differences and let's learn about how things go about. Now here is the comparison of the free cash flow. The definition we have learned, the net operating, investing and financing activity. So the free cash flow is used over here as to discount the value of the business. Objective is to find out the actual net cash flow of the business. The main objective is to find the valuation of the business. The scope of the cash flow is broader over here. It is limited. You can say the equation is we just studied operating, investing and financing activity. And over here, EBIT 1 minus tax plus depreciation, deduct any net increase in working capital and capital expenditure. Preparation of cash flow of complex, uh, cash flow gets complex when the multiple cash and non-cash transaction takes place during the year. Preparation of the FCFF become complex when we need to calculate everything before the applying the formula. The time consumption, cash flow takes a reasonable time. Over here, if all the information is available, FCFF does not take a lot of time. Key concepts, same all three. Over here, all the part of the formula, all the components of the formula, where it is used, one of the four most important financial statement in the financing accounting, and it is used under DCF method. And the source is to create the cash flow analysis over here to complete the free cash flow of the income. So let's make the final conclusion regarding this. Cash flow and free cash flow may seem like similar concepts, but they are completely different. The basic difference is the way they are used. One is used to gauge the viability of the business and another is used to find out the valuation of the business before investing. So as an investor, you need to look at both of them to have a holistic picture of the business. If you compare between cash flow and free cash flow in terms of importance, cash flow analysis should be your first preference because after ascertaining the net cash flow from the cash flow statement, you can always compute free cash flow from there. So that's it uh, for this particular topic. If you have learned and enjoyed watching this video, please like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel for the latest updates. Thank you, everyone. Cheers.